Hello again and welcome to my YouTube video series. Today I'm going to be talking to you about bullying, specifically what is bullying, the different types of bullying and also discuss in more detail the bully. My name is Tracy Maxfield, I'm a nurse, author, peer specialist and stop bullying and mental health advocate and educator. And for the month of October, in recognition of Bullying Prevention Awareness Month, I'm going to dedicate all my blog posts at www.tracymaxfield.com and my YouTube videos to the subject of bullying. Consider it a Bullying 101 five-part series. So today, let's get down to business. So. Lots of people actually say that there is no legal definition of a bully or what is bullying. Interestingly, when I was overseas in the UK and given a talk on workplace bullying, many of them commented that um, in the UK they don't have a legal definition of bullying. It's interesting because certainly in my research for Canada and the United States, I have found that there are um, definitions and so I'll read it. Bullying is the use of repeated aggressive behavior intended to hurt another individual physically, emotionally, mentally or sexually. It is the use of force, coercion or threat to abuse, aggressively dominate or intimidate. The behavior is repeated and habitual and one essential prerequisite is the perception by the bully or by others of an imbalance of physical and social power. And this imbalance distinguishing bullying from what we would call general conflict. What's interesting to note is that as we know, bullies do not need to be bigger or stronger. Anyone can actually be a bully. Now. There are three types of they call um, aggressive bullying behavior. Hostile intent, imbalance of power, and repetition over a period of time. If you have all of these, then you are definitely being bullied. And I think this is what people need to understand. It's intentional, it's repeated, there is a hostile intent, intent to cause harm, to uh, intimidate you, to threaten you, to upset you, and there's an imbalance of power. Also in the bully experience, there is just more than two people. So in the bully experience, we know there's the bully and there's the victim. But there's also, and they call it the circle of bullying, there is the upstander, there is the bystander, there is the assistant, and then there's the bully victim. And I'm actually going to describe these roles in more detail in a future um, YouTube video and blog post. But just to let you know that there's a number of people involved in the circle of bullying. So what are the types of bullying? Well, we have the verbal. And verbal are threats, allegations, um, intimidation, lies, you name it. Then we have physical. And physical can be something um, which is very obviously a push, a punch, a hit, a scratch, a bite, or it could be something like tripping someone up or coming behind them and yanking their backpack over their shoulders, causing them to fall forward. Then we have sexual. And again, sexual could be the physical component, but it's also the verbal and the emotional, including posting um, pictures on social media and of course when we come to social media um, I'm actually going to be talking about that in my next blog post and YouTube video because social media bullying called cyberbullying is a whole different genre of bullying. Um, if you are bullied in person at school in the community or wherever and then you're also bullied online it is called the total bully experience and it is extremely dangerous and very very harmful but it is, there is so much involved in cyberbullying that you need to know. I had to dedicate an entire blog to it. 
So then we have the physical, we have the verbal, we have psych volume, we have sexual, we have emotional, which is the humiliation, the threats, the taunts, the exposure, the outing. And then we have what they call social bullying. It's also called covert or relational. And this is where they, they spread lies and they gossip and they exclude. And so it's actually more common in girls. So it would be a group of girls who has one ringleader who is actually the bully, but it's the pack mentality. So she gets all the other girls to do the bullying at her request. So she can kind of stand there and say, well, I didn't do anything. But what she does is that she starts the rumors mill. She may print um, comments or pictures online. She will make lies. Um, she will also spread rumors at school and she will exclude. So she'll invite everyone to her party except a particular person. Social exclusion is a form of bullying. And I think we need to understand that because it relates very specifically to workplace bullying as well. So since I've started talking about bullying over the past couple of years, um, I have had more comments, threats and hate mail related to bullying, especially from men, um, men who were claiming that uh, there's no such thing as bullying, it's overreacting, everyone's too wimpy and weak, and that I really needed to know my place and not talk about it. And I, so, I absolutely disagree. As someone who experienced very severe workplace bullying to the point that I almost died, um, bullying is a big problem. And I have to say that if there are men who are acting like that. I cannot even begin to imagine what the home situation is like and how they must be, not only to their spouse or partner, but also to their children. So the dangerous misconceptions about bullying is that they need to toughen up, that bullying is a rite of passage and it's acceptable, that if you see bullying, you're supposed to mind your own business and not do anything. No one else should have a role between the bully and the victim. Um, adults can't do anything, uh, popular kids are bullies, and it's obvious when a child or teenager is being bullied. And I say to all of them, no, 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 no. So let's now turn our attention to the bully. And I'm sure a lot of people are just coming out with flip comments about, I know what I'd like to do to the bully, and the bully doesn't deserve attention. But actually, the bully needs as much help, if not more help, than the victim. Uh, because we have to recognize with this new generation of bullying that the bully is no longer the thug in in school who met us in the playground and um, demanded lunch money or wanted candies. Um, it's not Nelson from The Simpsons um, and it's not uh, anyone from TV shows and movies that went far back as the 80s. Um, uh, we have a whole new generation of bullies and bullying. And so let's talk about specifically children and teenagers that bully. Because as I always keep saying, for every behavior, there is a reason. Whether your behavior is good, bad, indifferent, nasty, mean, there is a reason behind it. And if we understand the reason, then it better helps us understand the person and then come to a solution. So the risk factors are um, there may be little or no parental involvement or rejection. There could be significant abuse and neglect at home. Um, you could have a child or a teenager whose friends are bullies and so feels that this is something that they should do. Um, you have a child or teenager who is extremely aggressive, agitated and easily frustrated. Um, they may see violence at home. They may witness their mum being physically um, assaulted by their father uh, all the time and feel that violence and intimidation is part and parcel of normal behaviour. And then you would also have the child or teenager who's generally a very sly, conniving, nasty, aggressive type of person who uh, abhors rules. And if you think back to the blog and video I did a while ago, blog number five on CD, conduct disorder and ODD, um, oppositional defined disorder, those kids are your classic bullies. So research says that those who bully every day 
are more likely to have experienced something stressful or traumatic in their lives and it was of significant toxic stress or it is continuing to go on and bullying is their way of expressing and managing their emotions. So you're going to hear a siren go by, sorry. Um, so indications could be death of a beloved pet, experience such as an accident, illness or serious attack, parental separation and divorce, abuse or neglect, which could be physical, sexual, emotional, significant family problems, incarceration of a parent, spousal abuse, alcoholism, mental illness, history of suicide attempts, or maybe there's bullying going on at home. Um, what we're doing now is classifying bullies into three categories. Type A is the bully who's the cool kid who gains strength and confidence by harassing vulnerable kids. And these type of bullies reassure themselves that they're actually not doing any harm, that they're just be joking and it's all in fun. And But what they do is they also get others to do more of the bullying for them. Then we have the type B bully. And that bully is aggressive and care and uncaring and comes from a very dysfunctional family. And they usually either have a conduct or opposition of defined disorder, or they may be depressed, anxious, easily pressured and isolated. And then the third type of bully that we have, who's actually um, the scariest bully of all, and that I will discuss in more detail in blog 18, this is actually blog and video 16, is bully victim. Bully victim is actually someone who was bullied relentlessly for years and years and years, reported it, nothing was done, and then becomes the bully. But what bully victims do is they seek revenge. So whenever I mention bully victim, think Columbine. Um, it's harsh, but it's true. So those are your three types of bullies. And I think other factors that we need to remember is that twice as many boys as girls are bullies but the victims are more girls than boys and girls whereas boys only usually only bully boys um, girls will bully boys and girls um, lots of boys tend to do it um, solo or as doubles or in a gang girls usually exclusively do it in a gang, so it could be three or more, but sometimes up to five, and it's called the wolf pack mentality. Um, girl bullies are more planned, they're more covert and subtle, and they use exclusion, alienation, and rumors um, to exact revenge. Um, high status kids bully to maintain dominance, low status kids bully to jockey for position on the social ladder. Um, Interesting research I found is that socially marginalized kids bully as a result of poor social coping and problem solving skills. There is a strong correlation between boys who exhibit bullying behaviors and dating violence. Absolutely, that will be done in a future post. Um, young bullies carry a one in four chance of being a bully as they get older and being involved in criminal activity by the time they are the age of. 30. And so right now the stats are approximately 1 in 3, 1 in 4 children and teenagers are bullied on a daily basis in the school. And when we talk about in the school, the environments can vary, um, can actually be in different settings in the school. It can also be in the school playground, it can be in the gym, it can be at the swimming pool, it can also be on the school bus. So I think those are important factors. Um, in fact, we've seen a lot of videos recently about bullying activity that goes on on the school bus and the bus driver actually does nothing or even participates in the bullying and that's unacceptable. So if you are a bully, there is an increased likelihood of A, failing grades and dropping out of school, B, substance abuse disorder, without a doubt, you becoming involved in petty crime, violence, um, joining a gang, um, chances are you're going to end up in prison before the age of 30. If you fail grades and you drop out of school, unemployment or difficulty managing a job, so you're not going to have a fulfilled life, um, very high probability, one in four, that you will go into continue to be a bully as you age, and so you will become a workplace bully or a bully at home or a bully to your partner or spouse. 
um, bullies who are children and teenagers as they get older struggle to maintain social, romantic and family relationships or if they do, people are very threatened and intimidated um, by them and they tend to um, maintain friendships with those who are actually threatened and feel more vulnerable so they can exert power and control. Um, bullies tend to engage in violence and early sexual activity because it's all, remember, control, power, dominance. Um, so I'm going to conclude these videos by saying, okay, so let's think. You're a parent and you're thinking, oh my God, could my child be a bully? Um, what can I do? First of all, please don't raise your arms up there and say, not me, not me, it's impossible, my child is perfect, or I'm at default. No, it isn't. Look beyond that. Certainly look what's going on in the home. Look what's going on in the school. If you suspect, or if someone has told you, or if the school has contacted you, find out the facts first. When did it happen? Where did it happen? Who was involved? What was the cause? You need to look at all those reasons why, because if they make an allegation that your child is a bully, it's very serious and you have to deal with it. I think what lots of parents, especially in the United States, are forgetting is that you can now, if you don't do anything and violence is involved and your child or teenager gets charged, you can also be um, brought to trial for being a negligent parent. So, you are complicit in this as well. Um, so I think the first thing is, is finding out the facts and then actually talking with your child or teenager. And it's got to be in a calm, non-threatening environment. And you've got to explore the options. What happened? Why did you do it? How did you feel when you did it? How do you feel after you did it? It could be that your child or teenager is struggling with a mental disorder and hasn't actually identified to you what's going on, or they may have um, a mental disorder and for some reason they may have stopped treatment or they're not getting any effect from the medication and in fact are getting worse, or they may have turned to drugs or alcohol. They may be mixed up with the wrong gang right, of friends who are actually intimidating them and coercing them to do this. So you really have to look beyond, my child is bad, that's it, um, I'm taking him to task, he's grounded, he's never gone out again. Why? Ask yourself, why is he doing this? Is he being bullied at home? Are his siblings bullying him? Is he being exposed, is she, he or she being exposed to abuse or violence or neglect that you're not aware of? Um, for example, a girl bullies, teenage girl bullies may be sexually abused by an, by the uncle, an uncle, or a stepfather, or a, an adult figure, but may have been threatened and intimidated into not revealing to mum and dad. Uh, but they're then going to act out because they have, remember, bullies are going through pain. They too are going through pain and they they do not know how to express their emotions in a safe environment. And so they do it via this um, want to make other people feel as bad and hurt as much as they do. Um, it may be that there is no abuse, but maybe you are absent or absent parents or helicopter parents or, you know, because you're working too much. and. I totally get that, but maybe they're feeling that you're not hearing them and that they could be jealous of the, the victim um, and they then want, you know, want to make them feel bad. Uh, as I said, look further. Don't always look and blame the bully and say the bully's got to be dealt with or they were incited into doing it. If they were incited to commit bullying behavior, then please look at the big picture and ask yourself why and then you deal with it. So you need to follow up with the doctor if you think there's other things going on or if it's medications or treatment. I think counseling is a really good option, not only individual counseling, but also family counseling. Um, I think it's setting ground rules. And then there's ongoing check-ins. How was school day? How did it go? And obviously, you got to follow up with the school because there is accountability in bullying. And so if your child or teenager has bullied, then this needs to be dealt with. But you want to have 
regular follow-ups? Is this behavior continuing? Is anyone pushing my kids' buttons? Etc. Etc. And so I think that it is totally realistic that if you're able to intervene and be there, and again, I use the words, be there, listen to, understand, non-judgmental, show, love, support, and understanding. This is something that will be dealt with and you can help move your child from a place where they are the bully to a place where they may be a, a, a mentor support to other kids who are bullied or they may help in school policies, um, they may join the Stop Bullying campaign. There are so many possibilities. So I hope that you found this information helpful. If you'd like to continue to receive my newsletters, blog posts and YouTube videos, please consider pressing the button below and subscribing. Next time, blog 17, YouTube video 17, cyberbullying. What is cyberbullying? I'm going to discuss some of the many different terms and also how to help children and teenagers who are being cyberbullied. Thank you.